So, it's December 21st, 2012. The world didn't end. Well, since I don't have that to talk about, I might as well talk about Quentin Tarantino's classic Pulp Fiction. Alright, so I'm talking about Pulp Fiction, Quentin Tarantino's second movie, it's probably his most famous. It stars John Travolta, Samuel L. Jackson, Uma Thurman, Bruce Willis, Ving Rhames, Amanda Plummer, Maria de Medeiros, Eric Stoltz, Harvey Keitel, Tim Roth, Rosanna Arquette, and Christopher Walken. So, you know, Pulp Fiction is directed by Quentin Tarantino and written by Quentin Tarantino and Roger Avery, it features three individual stories that are intertwined around the same time, featuring many of the same characters, and it's probably his most ambitious film, aside from Django Unchained and Inglorious Bastards. So, let's not waste any more time with this horrible Christopher Walken accent. Talk about the movie. So, Pulp Fiction, you know, you got the three stories, you got the Vincent Vegan. Marcellus Wallace's wife. So in this story you get Uma Thurman and John Travolta and uh, yeah, Vince Meg is supposed to take care of Mia Wallace. They go on a date, they get in the twist contest and everything. It's, uh, I think out of the three stories it's my least favorite, but it's got some of the most infamous scenes. I mean you got the overdose scene with the needle bringing down. That made people pass out in theaters and stuff. I mean come on, that's awesome. And you get the little Twist thing, you get Jackrabbit Slims, which was an awesome scene. I wanted to eat that restaurant so, so bad. I mean, it's such a cool restaurant. You got uh, Steve Buscemi making a cameo as a waiter, which is hilarious, because in Reservoir Dogs, he doesn't tip waiters and all that. You get that whole monologue, you know. But yeah, so it's a very cool one. It's got a lot of little funny things about it. Very well shot and all. And then the other two chapters, you get the Bonnie situation, which is featured at the beginning, and then at the end, where you get... Uh, John Travolta again and Samuel Jackson running around as these two hitmen who have these interesting conversations about stuff. I mean, the beginning, I mean, first seeing the movie is like cinema classic. You get the whole talking about a royale with cheese and everything in Amsterdam. And then they go to these people that they're trying to get a case from. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? Does he look like a bitch? English motherfucker, do you speak it? I mean, you got all these classic lines, you get the big Kuna burger and everything. There's so many stuff to list off, but it's awesome. It's You get the glowing suitcase, just these little touches that make it so awesome. It's just a really cool scene. And then later in the movie, you get them after that. Um, they got a situation where someone's head explodes in their car and they got to go get someone to clean up. You get Harvey Keitel as the wolf. You get Quentin Tarantino as Jimmy at one point. And it's really funny. I always enjoyed it. It was really good. Uh, Harvey could tell slightly, um, like they do have a bit of a build-up, and then once you do get him, it's slightly underwhelming, just slightly, because you think he might do a little bit more, but he's still pretty good. And then you get my favorite of the stories with Bruce Willis, the gold watch, you also get Christopher Walken, your father, hid this watch up his ass nine years, and now, little man, I give this watch to you. I mean, you get that cool thing, then you get Bruce Willis, um, Hit him and uh, Bing Rames got a big point where they go to a pawn shop with Zed and uh, the other guy. You got Grace the bike. You got him in the basement with a gimp. You know the samurai sword and everything. That's probably might be watching my favorite because that scene is so iconically creepy that it's never been. I mean, say what you will about put the lotion in the basket and all that. Like that's creepy. This creeped me a little bit more. It, it goes over a line that you haven't seen in movies before, I think. And I think you watch it, it might actually shock you. I think it shocked me when I saw it, I'll say that. And then you get um, Bruce Willis talking to his girlfriend's stuff, and uh, I want to eat blueberry pancakes and all that. I, that. Just that little weird dialogue that doesn't even matter. It was kind of funny. But it's a uh, good story. I mean, all the little payoff, him sneaking into his house. He has a moment or two with John Travolta. It's very cool. All these stories connect really well. The way they're so intertwined and everything. They're, the little details that connect these together, it's awesome. And the way it is so non-linear, it makes it amazing. It is probably one of my favorites. 
And I'm trying to think because Reservoir Dogs was my favorite going in, and watching Pulp Fiction again in Blu-ray made me appreciate it even more. So I, I find it very hard to choose between those two, because they are so different, but they're both so great in different ways. And I mean, the music too, I mean, this is a soundtrack you gotta buy, I mean, just at the beginning. The opening credits, the song switches halfway through and you get radio, digital noise and stuff going on, I mean, it's... Tarantino's doing some stuff here that's amazing. And watching it again on Blu-ray, I mean, it holds up so well. This movie's just really well done, so now I don't even know. I'm in a, I'm in a spot, because now I feel like I got three movies. Which one is my favorite? Because you got Reservoir Dogs, amazing heist film. I respect the hell of this movie. There's so many great things about it, and I love it. Then you get Pulp Fiction, another one. It's just amazing, all the story aspects and everything. Just a great movie. And then you got Inglorious Bastards, a really good fairy tale, I would say. And uh, this too, when I get to the reveal, I'll talk about why I love it so much. But yeah, these three are my favorites. And um, you know, I like Jackie Brown a lot, and Kill Bill is really good. Going into it though, I'm wondering if Django can like take that spot at the top and say, hey, this is his best work. And the truth is, uh, I, Jackie Brown isn't next. We got four rooms, which uh, I'll get to that when I get there. But Jackie Brown after that, I really like that one too. And um, that's what disappoints me about this. Check out my nice shirt. Alright, so this is my Tarantino shirt. You know you got Reservoir Dogs, Death Proof, Pulp Fiction, and Glorious Bastards, Kill Bill. And I wish I had Jackie Brown in here, because uh, looking back on things, Death Proof does not hold up very well, and I'll get to that when I get to it. But Jackie Brown, on the other hand, is an amazing movie, and I wish I had it on the damn shirt. And um, Django and Chain was... Like, I didn't even know about that when I made the shirt. It's kind of an old shirt now, so, you know. I have to get an updated version or something. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, so this is my Tarantino shirt. And, uh, be jealous, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you got a better one. But, yeah, this is it. It's kind of cool, so that's it. So, anyway, um, Pulp Fiction. Such a classic movie, definitely an A+. Plus. I mean, how could you not give it that? It's so enjoyable. But, uh, go watch it if you haven't seen it. And so if you like this review, you could like, subscribe, uh, maybe leave a comment below. What's your favorite part of Pulp Fiction? Which of the three stories did you enjoy most and why? Alright, so uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later when I view Four Rooms and Jackie Brown will be next. Alright, bye guys.